Hello everyone and welcome to our weekly broadcast. Always glad to come and just share what God has said with you with our Facebook family. So again, welcome. Before we get started, I would like to say thank you for all of those that either participated, you know, in, in the flesh with the conference and graduation or just watched on Facebook. It was truly a good time in the Lord and we are looking forward to the next conference, but you are the reason why it was so successful. So we appreciate your support and just looking forward to the next one. So thank you for all of those that were able to attend. Such a glorious time in the Lord and it was really an opportunity for those who are not really familiar with us and the work that we're doing to actually get an eyes on uh, view of how we operate and what our main goal is. Our, our, our main goal is not to compete, mm. but to complete. Amen. Uh, and that's very important to us. We're not trying to compete with any ministries, any churches, um, any of those that are lovers of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we're striving to be a, a part of the completion of the body of Christ so that we are prepared when the Lord comes back to go with him. Today we're going to be in a very special area and dealing with some subject matters uh, concerning vision. And, and it's good to know that uh, God's um, uh, vision and God's way of doing things and, and operating is so vitally important. And so many times we have vision, but it's not God-inspired vision. Today we're going to deal with God-inspired vision being a part of uh, God's providence. When you begin to look at uh, what you're doing and what's happening in your life, just remember there is a, a goal that God has in mind as he utilizes the giftings that he has placed inside of you. And if you'll always remember, God is not a taker, but God is a giver. Amen. That simply means that whatever it is God has ordained or inspired you to do in his name, in his glory, trust me, God is going to have provisions there for you, and it's all about provisions. We talk many times about the kingdom and about it's all about God's kingdom and kingdom business. Well, understand that kingdom business means it's God's responsibility to not only bring the resources to his kingdom, but to make sure that we are, uh, have the proper provisions to do what God has commanded us to do. Amen. You often hear the saying, where God guides, he provides. And some of you, it may seem cliche, but it's so true. We can look in the Old Testament and the New Testament all throughout the Bible and see that where God led, where God guided, he provided as well. So that's a sign for us. It should be confirmation that where we're going is God providing for us. That's confirmation that he is truly guiding us. Because sometimes we, he gives us direction and we're like, God, are you sure? You know, if it dries up, it may be time for you to move on. <laughs> you know, But where he guides you, God will always provide it's not so much always material even though we're going to read about the story where it is material but spiritually nourishment god will give you the impartation you need for the season you're in so it's all around provision and when you begin to examine how god operates how he functions you look at the life of joseph and all the many things he went through to get to this point of uh, promotion in his life. But the one factor that stands out is God was not concerned just about Joseph. That's right. Joseph was a man after God's own heart in the sense that he believed God and he believed that God was going to do what he was going to do. And he did not doubt him along the way. But this was not just about Joseph. It was about God making provisions for his chosen people. And as you look at your vision, if your vision only includes enough room for you and only promotes you, then that is not God's vision. That's your vision. And that's not going to have the provisions of God. But when God gives you vision, it is not a selfish vision. It's a vision that actually ministers to all that are in his kingdom, all of God's chosen people. And you may be mistaken. You may be praying, God, I need you to give me this or give me the other or provide this or the other. Just remember, God is looking out for more than just you, yes. but this is kingdom business. God looks out for his entire kingdom when he operates and moves upon the, the use of individuals. Amen. And everything that's attached to you will be blessed, provided for. If you look at Genesis, Genesis 45 and 16, let's read a couple verses out there. It says, And the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brethren are come, and it pleased Pharaoh well and his servants. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Say unto thy brethren, This do ye, laid your beast, and go, get you into the land of Canaan, and take your father 
and your household and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and you shall eat the fat of the land. Look at God. He is saying he's include all Joseph's family. He realized they're coming. He said he's going to give them the good of the land. They're going to eat the fat of the land. Can you imagine, even after all Joseph went through, you know, the privilege that his brothers are seeing that he, he is in now, and they're being blessed because of him? It's, you know, like Apostle was saying, it's not all about us, but it's about saving much people alive. Sometimes we look at the things that we go through as, you know, an attack personally, but we should never look at it that way because God always has an ultimate end. He is always looking ahead. I think about what Isaiah 55 says, you know, talking about the Lord's thoughts or, you know, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So we have to remember, although we may be thinking a certain way because we can only see so far, God's ways are always higher than ours. And he is always looking out for our future and not only our future, but our seed and our seed sees future. And just remember this, when you operate in faith, when you're doing what you do because you believe in an invisible God who is a God of provision, a God that's more than enough, certain things are bound to happen. I like what is said in Hebrews chapter 6, uh, 11, chapter 11, mm -hmm. verse 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. But it makes the statement that they that believe in God must believe that he is. Mm -hmm and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That's the one key element in the life of Joseph in actually pursuing the will and purpose of God. He was diligently seeking God. How do you diligently seek God? Many would say you stay in church about four or five times a week. Others would say you spend your time going out and witnessing from door to door. Mm -hmm. And uh, others will, will say you, you spend your time gathering up goods and giving them to the poor. And all these are good. All these are, are actually examples of a, a changed life for many of God's people. But just recognize the greatest uh, thing about diligently seeking God is developing a strong relationship with him trusting him in every area of your life like the scriptures say in proverbs lean not to your own understanding but acknowledge god in everything make god a vital part of your life make certain that everything you do you've got god smack dab in the middle of it because see god is god and he will make a way where there is no way he will bring blessings in your life but you've got to diligently seek him that means diligently cultivate a relationship with him trust him rely on him acknowledge him and he will bless you he rewards those who have a heart that's panting after him let your heart be toward God and it does not mean that you have to be perfect right. uh, we're certain that Joseph we see so many perfect things about the life of Joseph when it comes to serving God. But I'm also certain there were times that he was really depressed or felt kind of left alone or felt kind of estranged. But what he did is he did not allow that to cultivate or cause him to deny God or to reject the faith and confidence he had in the fact that whatever he was going through, God was going to bless him. Remember, whatever's going on in your life, God's got you. God is looking after you, and it's going to come out for not only your best interest, but also all those that love the Lord are going to be blessed as God blesses you. It's not a season for my four and no more, Amen. but it's to recognize that God will bless you in, in spite of what you're going through, not just for your sake, but for the kingdom's sake and for others that are pursuing his will. And his purpose. Amen. Now, if you look at Genesis 45 and 25, and it says, They went up out of Egypt, talking about Joseph's brethren, and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father, and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive, and he is the governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw, that, saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob their father revived and Israel said it is enough 
Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. So sometimes all we need is a, a reminder that those things that we thought were dead are no longer dead. They are yet alive. And I think about how Jacob's spirit revived. He came alive again because he thought that Joseph, his beloved son, was dead. And how many times in our life do we think that our visions are dead, that our children, there's no hope with our children, but all we need is just reassurance. All we need is a ready word and ready season reminding you, oh no, they are not dead they just been laying dormant but they are not dead this is the message for us today all those things that you thought were dead all those disappointments that you thought there were no hope god is letting you know if you trust in me if you allow me to direct your past i'm the one to revive those things not just those things but revive your hope revive your spirit because it's a mind thing when you believe like hebrews 11 and 6 do you believe that god is do you believe he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him if you do then you should be in expectation not no, because you know that God is going to reward you. Don't God told me this morning, I was thinking about, you know, how we look for things. He said, no, don't just look for it. You should be expecting it. It's one thing to look for God to move. But when you expect him, oh, you are just in expectation. Your spirit is open and you know that God is going to provide. So just like Jacob here was revived, his spirit came alive. This is a message to you. Let God live. Let him revive those things in you that lay dormant because your hope was deferred. And when you begin to look at deferred hope and you look at what's going on in your life, it's good to remember that God is always watching after you. I like this 46th chapter, especially the first uh, few verses of Scripture, and this is what it says. It says, And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. Mm -hmm. Here, here uh, Israel is getting ready to go into some provisions that God has provided, but he takes some time out and gives glory to God and makes sacrifices to God. You see, no matter where you're going, no matter how you're elevated, no matter what's going on in your life, always remember to set aside that special time to glorify, magnify, and thank God. Mm -hmm. It says in that second verse, and God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night. Here God mm -hmm. is speaking to Israel. Mm -hmm. He's speaking to Israel. Of course, we know that, that Israel, he, this is Jacob, right. whose name was changed to Israel. But here God speaks to Israel in the visions of the night mm -hmm. and said, Jacob, Jacob. And uh, Jacob said, here am I. The, the important thing to remember is when God calls a name out twice, yes. he is very serious. He is very absolute. And he's getting ready to say something that is a matter of fact, mm -hmm. not a matter of just uh, uh, coincidence. He tells, uh, tells uh, Israel, he said, he said, I am, the, you, I am God, mm -hmm. the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt. That's number one, I make of thee a great nation. Mm -hmm. Number two, I will go down with thee into Egypt. And number three, I will also surely bring thee up again, meaning I'll bring you out. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. Mm -hmm. When you look at that statement, here God is in the midst of what's going on. Now he's given full revelation mm -hmm. as to his uh, divine purpose for the life of Israel. God has a divine purpose for you. That's right. Yeah, it's not about your job. It's not about your family. It's not about your companion. It's not about what you think. God has a divine hand on your life. Mm -hmm. And your life in Christ is always going to be great. And God will always, at special times, remind you of how special, how unique, and how precious you are to him. You may not be worth a nickels, <laughs> worth a dog beat to a whole lot of people right. in this world, Amen. but in the sight of God, you are very precious. Mm -hmm. You may be the dung of the earth to some of the folks that are around you, but in the sight of God, you are very precious. And God will keep confirming mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Over these years that I've lived for God, it's been a comfort that whenever I thought God was maybe sitting back watching me go through, God reminds me that whatever you're going through, I'm there with you too. So you see, God is with you. Yeah. God is going to stick with you. He is going to find every way to bring you through. And I like what Jesus used to say. He used to say, you know what? He said, let those that have ears to hear, let them hear. You must 
must have ears to hear what God is doing. And whenever you think about hearing God, there's another uh, verse of scripture that I like in the 10th chapter of Romans. It makes the statement that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you see, as you get into God's word, as you study God's word, as you pursue the truth of God's word, it will give you ears to hear God. God is always talking, darlings. He's always speaking into your spirit. He's always saying great and mighty things to you and giving you his promises. But in order to fully understand and receive and to operate in them, you've got to be rooted grounded and saturated in the word of God. Amen. And our job as believers is to get moving and get out of fear. Let me say that one more time. Our job is to get moving and get out of fear. I think about what Jacob did. He didn't wait for God to give him that confirmation that he was with him. He started moving. And then, of course, on the move, God reassured him, I am with you. So remember, you got to start moving. Don't wait, you know, because you're fearful. What if this? What if that? The main thing you need to remember is that God with, with, is with you. If he's with you and for you, he's more than the world against you. I like what Joshua wanted. And I reminds us, we quote it all the time. It says, Have I not commend, commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. So God said, He's with you wherever you go. If you go across the country, if you go across the world, if you go into the depths of the sea, if you go into ascending to the heights of the heavens, wherever you go, God is with you. Our job is to be strong. Be courageous because those things, some things are going to come and say, have you doubting? Well, is this God? You know, you sure I'm having too much, you know, um, st things coming against me. I don't think this is God. No, you be strong. You be courageous and move fear out of the way and just keep moving because God is going to assure you. He's already assured some of us that he's with us and we're still waiting on the sign. Oh, I don't see the sign yet. So I got to wait. No, get moving and get fear out of the way. You know, I think about what David said, uh -huh. and it's really interesting. You know, there's an old, another old saying that goes like this. If you make your bed uh, hard, then oh. you've got to lay in it. Amen. Well, listen, what I like is what David said. Uh -huh. David said, though I make my bed in hell, okay. God is there. He said, though I go <laughs> to the upper parts of heaven, he said, God is there. Wherever I go, whatever I'm in, Whatever I'm going through, God is there with me. Where can you flee from the presence of God? You might as well stop running. You might as well stop hiding because you can run, but you can't hide. You can do everything you want to to get away from God, but God is after you, darlings. God is wanting to bless you. And I like what he told um, uh, Joshua. Joshua was camped out right there because Moses, his servant, was dead. Yeah. God came to Joshua and said, Joshua, you need to get your behind up. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. He said, get you up and go forward. He said, the way I was with Moses, that's the way I'm going to be with you. But he charged, uh, he charged Joshua with, with this one thing. Mm -hmm. He said, I need you to meditate in the word day and night. He said, that's the way you're going to make your way prosperous and have great success. Listen, you may have a vision of having a, your own business and different other visions that you want to, to, uh, to uh, create or bring forth, but you need to make certain that all of your visions have Christ in it. Make certain that God is in everything you do and make it a God-inspired vision. How do you make it a God-inspired vision? Well, God said, uh, whatever you put your hands to, he's going to bless. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is acknowledge the Lord in what you're doing. Trust in him in what you're doing. And it becomes a God-inspired vision. And it is going to be successful. And God is going to bless your socks off. God's going to cause things to come forward and to bless you. Not because you're so great and so powerful, but you're connected to someone who is all-powerful and all-gracious and all all glorious and a God that's more than enough. Listen, when you look at uh, that seventh verse of that 46th chapter, it says that uh, Israel took his sons, his sons' sons with him, his daughters, yeah. his sons' daughters, and all his seed brought he with him into Egypt. All his seed, everything that was connected to him, he brought them into the provisions of the Lord. And when you begin to look at this, just remember, uh, according to Scripture, there was uh, 70 souls all total mm -hmm. that went into uh, into Egypt. Now, 
uh, after uh, the the bondage was 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 uh, they were delivered out of bondage by the Lord. There was almost two million that came out of Egypt. God multiplied them where they went. And listen to me, I don't care where you are. If you can't sprout and begin to grow and mature where you are, uh, instead of trying to find a place that, that you can grow and mature in that's outside the will of God, find the will of God. And I guarantee told you, God will cause you to prosper. Now, Finding the will of God is not a place. Mm -mm. It is a purpose. Yes. Finding the will of God is not a particular area, but it is a particular mindset. Find the will of God for your life. Find your place called there. And when you get to your place called there, God is going to bless you. Amen. And just to add to that, don't give up. Don't give out until you get to that place called there, until you find yourself in the center of God's will. Don't give up. I was re well, um, riding the other day, and I saw this church sign, and it said, when I went to God and told him I wanted to give up, he spoke to me and said, get up. Sometimes we go to God and say, God, I quit. I give up. But his word to you is, no, get up. Get out of that depression. Get out of whatever you're in because I have purpose for you. I have destiny for you. And he gave us a word the other night about, you know, stretching us, expanding us. And some of us abort the purpose and destinies that's on it, inside of us because we don't want to push. Push. Pray until something happens. That's all we have to do. And remember, like Apostle said, there's more connected to you than what you see. Not so much our physical families all the time, but someone needs to hear from you. Someone is waiting to hear your testimony of faith. Someone is waiting to hear your testimony of deliverance. And what if you give up before you get to your destiny? What if you give up before you get to your purpose? We want to push. We want to allow God to do whatever he needs to do. Because like we see in the life of Joseph, he sees at the end, he sees that it was not about him. It's never about us. It's always about someone else. And, you know, what I appreciate about God, I was thinking about this weekend, and what a great blessing mm -hmm. it was to see so many lives uh, speaking of the change that uh, that has happened in their life because of the work that God's assigned us to do. Mm -hmm. The great thing about it is uh, that they are coming forth. Yes. You, you have men and women of God who've been ordained and called of God to work, who now are being fully equipped, mm -hmm. who are now finding that next level of strength in God to do his will and purpose. And I, I often think, I, you know, I spent my first 20 years of, of growing and, and working on the farm. What if I had just, and there were so many things that were so negative, what if I had just said, you know what, I this is all I'm ever going to be and I might as well settle down and this is it. But no, God uh, uh, saved me. Uh, God then began to put vision, inspired vision inside of me of what he wanted for his, his people. And all I did was obeyed him in spite of what I was going through. Yes, I got knocked down. I got criticized. I got uh, even uh, abused in certain situation and circumstance, but that was okay because I still would never give up. Mm -hmm. I would give out a many a times, but I wouldn't give yeah, up. I right. keep right on pursuing. Didn't have the resources to do what I knew God wanted me to do, but I used everything I could get my hands on to make sure that the vision operated in a spirit of excellence. And as I began to look at those uh, men and women of God as they walked across the stage on Saturday and, and began to see the impact yes. of their lives and how they had that not hand out, but they had a hand up Amen. and they were able to, to uh, speak confidently about what God was in their life and how God was with them. I made a statement and, uh, and this, is, uh, this is true of those that would be good leaders or great leaders. You got to recognize that whoever you're leading or whoever you're pouring into must exceed uh, what you have done because in doing so, that proves that you're the real deal. If all they can do is get to where you're at and, 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 and stop there, then, then that's, a, that's a bad side because that means that it will not live beyond your generation. Right. But when you begin to pour into others and put them to their next level that moves into another generation and then another generation and then another generation and it will exceed you joseph is not mentioned uh, as a matter of fact uh, no tribe was given i mean no tribal blessing was given to joseph mm -hmm. but what uh, israel did is israel took the two sons of joseph mm -hmm. and he he moved them in to be part of the 12 so the 12 was now made up of uh, two of uh, Joseph's 
uh, sons. And uh, of course, the oldest son had forfeited his place uh, in the inheritance. Uh, but when you speak of the 12 tribes of, of Israel, you do not hear a tribe called Joseph, Joseph but you hear a tribe called Ephraim and Manasseh. Yes, uh -huh. And that is because God, uh, although Joseph was responsible for saving that end time nation from starvation, he is not named as one of the 12 tribes, uh -huh. but his sons uh, took over that position. That goes to prove to you that, that Joseph was not concerned about being mentioned as being somebody great or somebody wonderful, but he was concerned about doing God's will, uh, being a blessing for God's people and being a, an instrument. Make certain that when you're an instrument for God, you recognize it is not personal, right. it is not selfish, and it is not just for you. It's for all that God connects you to, mm -hmm. all that God connects you to. Amen. And like you were saying about, you know, when you impart and you lead those and they excel you and exceed you, you know, this should be a great accomplishment to you as a leader. I think about this story with Joseph and Jacob, how when Joseph was younger, he had a dream and he told his father, he told his brothers that, he, you know, in the dream, he was over them. And at the time, his father pondered those things in his heart, but he probably could never see that. But he, here we see that he has exceeded him. He has exceeded his brothers. But we have to remember, like Apostle was saying, it's always about... You know those things going forward joseph knew his part do you know your part when we know our part we don't get upset when nobody mentions us when we know our part we understand that some people some things are seasonal in our life there sometimes we we hold on to things we hold on to people we hold on positions that are really seasonal but when you realize your part when you realize the things that are seasonal and the things that are forever you can grab a hold of god's will and know this is just a process to get me to my desired end but you have to know and recognize is this seasonal what is my part and when you focus on your part that's when god's will can be accomplished in your life and you're not stirred you're not swayed by things around you but you're only swayed by the word of god and the promise that god has put in your spirit you know what's really interesting is even in the midst of being brought into egypt uh, God still, through the hand of Joseph, made sure that they didn't co-mingle uh, with the Egyptian. True. Because you'll find in uh, that 32nd verse that he was actually, uh, Joseph said he was going to share with Pharaoh that, that all of his people are shepherds. Well, you see, according to the Jewish um, historical tradition, the, I mean, the, not the Jewish, but the Egyptians' uh, historic tradition, the Egyptians actually didn't care a lot about shepherds. As a matter of fact, they felt like that were useless or, or not a vital part of anybody's uh, uh, kingdom or anybody's work. So, so Joseph told the Pharaoh, mm -hmm. he said, my people are shepherds. And the Pharaoh, knowing the favor that he wanted to give Joseph, gave them what the place called Goshen. And in Goshen, it was the prime land for shepherds. It had the pasture lands and everything, but it was also well away from the life of the Egyptians. So even in the midst of promotion, even in the midst of provision, there was still a difference made between God's people and the people of Egypt. That lets us know that no matter how God deals with us and how he takes care of us, there's got to be a difference between the way you live and the way those around you that don't know God live. And there's a separation. What I appreciate is when the curses came upon Egypt, in Goshen, none of those curses touched Goshen. God protected his people. God wants to protect you. Yes. God wants to look after you, but you've got to find your Goshen in God. Mm -hmm. you got to find that place wherein you are not impacted by those things around you, but you're able to hold on to what God has, has brought you into by what he took you through. Amen. And we must stop settling. I think about what it says in verse 11 and that 47 chapter it says and joseph placed his father and his brother and gave them a possession in the land of egypt in the best of the land and in the land the ramses of pharaoh had commanded and joseph nourished his father and his brother and all his father's house with bread according to their families but it said in the best of the land we don't want to give up and settle because god has the best for us when you're in god's will when he is guiding you he has the best left for you and i look at our lives sometimes and you know the things that we wanted over the years and 
at the moment, we may want something, we desire something, but you know, the door is closed and years later, or months later, the door is open for something better. And we realize had we settled a year before, or had we settled months before, we wouldn't have got God's best. So realize where God is guiding you. He has the best laid up for you. A lot of times we want to stop right here because we feel like, okay, this is best. This is better. This is, you know, I can handle this, but it's not about what you can handle. What is best? And God has that laid all aside for you when you get in his perfect will. And, and you'll find in that 48th chapter, uh, that uh, third verse, uh, Jacob, it, he's called Jacob here uh, instead of Israel. That's very significant because he's now beginning to establish a line mm -hmm. of his conversion, a line of his conversion. He was not ashamed mm -hmm. of what he used to be, but he uh, recognized that what he used to be actually was important to clarify who he is now. So it says, Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at the Luz, at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me mm -hmm. and, and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee and I will make of thee a multitude of people and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. He said to, he said to Joseph, said, Now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, uh, which were born under thee in the land of Egypt before I came unto thee uh, in the Egypt under a man as Reuben and Simeon. In other words, he said, they're just like my oldest uh, uh, sons now. Mm -hmm. They shall be mine. And thy issue which thou begottest uh, after them shall be thine and shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. And the Bible said he was, uh, he laid his hands on them, but he uh, and he put his right hand, which was a transference of the firstborn authority, instead of putting that uh, on the oldest, he put it on the youngest. Right. Ephraim was the youngest, but but the Bible says that, that Jacob crossed his hands and put the right hand of the anointing upon Ephraim instead of Manasseh. Remember the names of those two. Manasseh, he, his name was uh, uh, meant uh, God has not forgotten. Mm -hmm. But you look at Ephraim, his name is fruitfulness. Mm -hmm. his, his name was uh, productivity is what it meant. So you, as you look at that, you see God was all about blessing fruitfulness, yes. all about blessing productivity. Mm -hmm. So uh, as we've mentioned before, uh, LT said, you know, you got to get up. You got to keep moving. You got to keep doing. You got to be busy about the Lord's business. You've got to be fruitful. Jesus said it this way. He said, you've not chosen me. That's in that 15th chapter of John's gospel. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and that you should bring forth fruit and be fruitful. That's what it's all about, darlings. God is wanting you to produce, yes. not for the world system, not for the world's sake, but God's wanting you to produce for the sake of the kingdom. I firmly believe everything that we need as kingdom men and women is in the kingdom. I believe that if we would allow the giftings that we have to manifest themselves the way they should, if we can grow and mature the way we should, I believe that we would not have to go to the world system for anything. I believe God would have it all uh, given to us, transferred through us to one another through those walking in the kingdom in the fullness of their destiny and their purpose. Amen. And we must not lose heart, even in the today's world, thinking that, you know, we're going to despair or we're going to lose things or we're going to be without because there is a spiritual Goshen here. There is a spiritual Goshen here on this earth that God will provide for his people. But you got to trust him and know that God, there's nothing impossible with God. So keep your eyes on him. Like they used to say, keep your eyes on the prize. Know that God, he is a provisional God. Where he guides, he also provides. And the provision is in the center of his will. So when you begin to look at all the things that's going on, uh, and, and you're trying to understand what is it that I need to do. Mm -hmm. You need to remember this. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And with God, all things are possible to them that believe. God bless you. Amen. Love you. We're looking forward to being with you in our next session together. Till then, keep your faith and your trust in God. Amen. God bless.